I, I hate when people talk about sovereignty. I'll just shut up about sovereignty. What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. Today we're gonna be going over one of my little side projects that I just got finished. I set up my own Bitcoin full node on this Raspberry Pi 4. In this video, I'll be explaining to you what a full node is, why you might wanna set up your own full node, and I'll be including a quick little demo of how to get Umbral set up for yourself so that you can run this full node setup that I've created here. Also, none of this is financial advice, just like all my other videos. I'm just here to share my experience with you about how to set up a full node and what the benefits of it are. Don't uproot your entire business or your entire life based on this video and run a full node and totally f yourself up because you don't know what you're doing. Monetary sovereignty is really cool and being your own bank is really great, but there are totally risks to it. And so you should proceed with caution and take baby steps until you really know what you're doing. Smash the like button down below for avoiding dumb decisions like that and let's jump into it. So first, what is a Bitcoin full node? A Bitcoin full node is a copy of the Bitcoin software that fully validates transactions and new blocks on the Bitcoin network. Full nodes are called full because they hold the entire history of every transaction that has ever happened on the Bitcoin blockchain. Full nodes are really important because if there aren't enough full nodes, eventually the network will centralize around the few full nodes that are in existence, and it will be using those more centralized full nodes to validate all of the transactions that are coming through. This is a problem that bigger blockchains and more expensive blockchains like Ethereum are running into now. And there was actually a big civil war in the Bitcoin community back in 2017 around should we make the blockchain any bigger so that we can include more transactions per block. And the Bitcoin community said, no, you can hard fork off to Bitcoin Cash. We're gonna stick here with Bitcoin with small block sizes so that more and more people can run full nodes from their houses on Raspberry Pis like this. The cheaper it is to run a full node generally, the more decentralized the network will be. And that's one of the biggest selling points of Bitcoin. If you want some more information on what a full node is, I've linked an article over at bitcoin.org down in the description, so you should check that out if you just wanna learn a little bit more. People can also get confused when it comes to what are the electricity costs of running a full node. People see in the media all the time, oh, Bitcoin is so expensive, all this electricity, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually related to proof of work and mining. It actually has nothing to do with running a full node. I've seen estimates online that the cost of running a Raspberry Pi, depending obviously on what your electricity costs are in your area, it could range anywhere from five to $20 a year. So really not a big deal. And since setting this up, I've seen no meaningful change in my electricity bill. All in all, it cost me around $200 to set the whole thing up. And most of that cost was the Raspberry Pi itself. And then the hard drive that accompanies the Raspberry Pi that you're gonna need just to basically future-proof your Bitcoin full node and make sure that you never run out of hard drive space as more and more blocks get validated and come in to be stored on your Raspberry Pi. Next, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your own Bitcoin full node, full nude. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your own Bitcoin full node in your house, just like I did with Raspberry Pi and the Umbral software. Setting up your own Bitcoin full node with Umbral is super simple. Their website, really, really great user experience. They take you through everything that you need to buy to get this set up. And then they even take you through videos of how to get the software set up and running for yourself. So I'll link their website down in the description. If you get confused at any point with the tutorial that I'm sharing with you here, definitely go check out their website. I think they will be able to answer all of your questions. If you do still have more questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I do respond to all the comments. And additionally, I'll be leaving Amazon links in the description if you wanna buy any of the materials that you'll need to set up your own Raspberry Pi Bitcoin full node. So once you have all your stuff, you're gonna go over to that Umbral link down in the description and you're gonna grab the download for Belena Etcher, which is a software that's gonna allow you to flash the Umbral software onto your Raspberry Pi. And then you're gonna to wanna to go download the Umbral software itself down at that link in the description as well. So then you're gonna boot up Belena Etcher and you're gonna flash the Umbral software onto your SD card that you're gonna plug into your computer. If you're using a MacBook Pro like me, you're gonna need obviously an external adapter to plug that SD card in. And then you'll take that micro SD card and you will plug it into your Raspberry Pi. And then you're gonna hook up the Raspberry Pi to your router so that it can get onto your internet. And you're gonna hook it up to power so that it obviously can turn on. Once you've done that, you're totally done. That's actually all you need to do. It's a very, very simple process. The hardest part for me was actually getting the Raspberry Pi 4 into the case that I purchased with it. If you're having problems with this too. I thought that you could just drop it in from the top. But if you do that, you're gonna have a really bad time. You might break your board if you really try to force it in there. So what you're gonna wanna do is tilt it at an angle and then slide it in from the side, basically. Once you get that little trick, you should actually be able to set up this whole thing in like 10 minutes. It's a really, really fast and simple process. And so then to verify that it's working, you're gonna go onto a computer that's connected to the same Wi-Fi as you plugged your Raspberry Pi into. And you're gonna go to umbral.local and you're gonna follow the setup instructions that you get there. And then once you've logged into Umbral, you're going to start seeing 
meaning your Bitcoin blockchain is gonna start syncing and that should take you a few days, maybe a week to get fully synced up with the Bitcoin blockchain. But don't worry, in the meantime, you can actually still download apps and start using your Umbral node, your Umbral wallet before you've fully synced 100%. So now that you've set up your full node, you're probably wondering what the f can I even do with a Bitcoin full node? I've asked myself that a couple of times and happily in the last couple of weeks, I've found an answer to that question. Once you've got Umbral set up, you can go to umbral.local and the first app that I installed and the one that I think is probably the coolest is the Block Explorer. The one that's available on Umbral is called BTC RPC Explorer. And then one that's very similar is called Mempool. And that's just basically gonna show you what the current fee situation is looking like on the Bitcoin network, which is really valuable if you're looking to send a lot of Bitcoin. It'll basically show you how congested the network is. So this block explorer is gonna allow you to, again, go through every single transaction that's ever happened on the blockchain. If someone doesn't believe you that you sent money to them or that a transaction went through, you can physically show them, all right, well, this is the block it was contained in. If someone doesn't believe you that there's a 21 million supply cap, you can show them that. And it really falls into this ethos of Bitcoin. There's a saying in the community, don't trust verify. And this is the epitome of don't trust verify. This is your copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. So don't trust verify is one really cool application of running your own full node, but let's look at some even cooler and more practical applications of running a Bitcoin full node. The first really interesting application here is since you have a full node, you can also run Lightning on top of your full node and you can have your own Lightning node to interact with the Lightning network, which is a layer two solution on top of Bitcoin. Sending Bitcoin over the Lightning network is the best way to use Bitcoin as spending money. There are a lot of people who think that Bitcoin can't ever become a medium of exchange. Everyone is sort of on the same page that it's a store of value, but they're like, oh, well, you can't send it very fast. And that's actually not the point of the main chain. The main chain is supposed to be really secure and slow, sort of like Fedwire. And Bitcoin is actually a lot faster than Fedwire. But if you want to get to Visa level transaction throughput, you definitely can't do that on the Bitcoin blockchain. You need to do that off chain at a separate layer two scaling layer. And that's what the Lightning Network is. So once you've opened up a Lightning channel with someone else, you can send them back and forth Satoshis, which are the smallest unit of Bitcoin, one over one 100 million Bitcoin as a Satoshi. You can send them one Satoshi or two Satoshis, which at current prices is like 0.06 cents. You can send them an infinitesimal amount of money for no fees at all, if you have a direct channel open between me and you. Additionally, by connecting to a lot of different Lightning nodes, your node can actually become a router for traffic through the Lightning network. If your node is really well connected, let's say you are connected to me and I'm connected to 500 other people. If you ever need to send Bitcoin to one of those 500 people, but you can't directly connect to them because you don't know what their lightning address is, you can forward your Bitcoin to me and I will forward it to them. And each node step along the way, you're accruing a very small fee. So when you're interacting to a node that you are directly connected with, there's basically no fees, but the fees slowly add up as you hit more and more nodes. And so you can imagine it's actually very profitable to be one of these huge nodes that has a lot of connections to it. You can think of those nodes as like the New York City of nodes. There's all sorts of traffic going in and out of those nodes, and they're basically collecting small tolls as the Bitcoin flows through them and to other destinations on the Lightning Network. I'll leave my Lightning node address down in the description, and so feel free to open up a channel with me if you want to test something like this out. And then down in the comments, if you want to leave the address for your Lightning node, we can all connect to each other and start to build up our Lightning Network presences. The Lightning Network for me up until now has been very sort of mythical and confusing. I've always understood that it's a layer two solution that's supposed to be cheaper and faster than Bitcoin, but I never knew how it worked. And so getting the opportunity to see how it works by running my own full node is really, really helpful to me and my understanding of the ecosystem as a whole. The final cool thing I'll talk to you here about is multi-sig. Multi-sig basically allows you to remove single points of failure from your Bitcoin custody setup. A lot of you are probably using one hardware wallet right now, and you've got your seed phrase on a piece of paper in your sock drawer or something. As you start to accumulate more and more Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and as the price of Bitcoin starts to go through the roof, you might start to get a little bit worried about having all of that money sitting in your sock drawer on a piece of paper. So what multi-sig allows you to do is to set up your own custody solution where you're trading off some of the efficiencies of you only have to sign the transaction with your one hardware wallet into now maybe you have to sign the transaction with two of three hardware wallets. So you can set up the one hardware wallet in your sock drawer, maybe you buy a second hardware wallet, and then you have your full node that's acting as your third wallet. And so now if you lose 
lose any one of those three wallets or the seed phrase to one of those three wallets, it doesn't matter because you only need two of the three to actually retain all of your funds and to send around your Bitcoin. So it's a double-edged sword. What you give up in convenience, you're actually getting in redundancy and security of your Bitcoin. So this is sort of the opposite of the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is for Bitcoin that you want to send around and spend all the time. And then multi-sig is for Bitcoin that you want to hold in like deep cold storage and not really move around all that often. There are some expensive alternatives to setting up multi-sig on your own, namely Casa and Unchained Capital, where you're trusting a third-party institution with setting up your multi-sig. And I actually made a video about that a couple weeks ago that I'll link up in the cards here. So if you want to check out those multi-sig solutions because you're worried that you'll mess it up yourself if you do it with Spectre, you can definitely check out that video and get set up with either Casa or Unchained Capital if you are interested in multi-sig. Some people will like the security of Casa or Unchained Capital holding their keys for them. And then others will be very skeptical of giving their keys away to a third party institution and will want to set up their own multi-sig on a full node using something like Spectre. Using something like Spectre, it does have that risk that you could up your multi-sig solution basically and lose your funds forever. So you do really need to know what you're doing and set it up in a way that's maintainable. And I think Spectre makes that pretty easy for you. There are some very clear, easy to follow steps that it's gonna lead you through. As a general rule, you should try to set up your multi-sig in a two of three or a three of five or a four of seven sort of situation. You don't wanna put yourself into a two of two or a three of three. Anything where you need 100% of the keys to verify the transaction is generally a bad idea. So you are taking that risk of doing it yourself and messing it up. You're not getting the handholding that Casa or Unchained Capital is gonna give you. But again, for the one millionth time in this video, you are going to be fully sovereign and not have to outsource any of that sovereignty basically or any of that trust and take any counterparty risk by using a company like Casa or like Unchained Capital. There's a lot more that you can do with a full node and the list of apps that Umbral is supporting is growing. And so there's a lot of really cool stuff that you're gonna be able to do in the future. I think for me, the Lightning Network and then being able to set up your own multi-sig are probably the coolest things that you can do with a full node. There's a ton more that you can do with full nodes. I did my best to keep this video short. It probably did not end up short. It seems like it's gonna be a really long video. But if you do have any questions about running a full node or if you get stuck in the setup at any point, feel free to leave a comment. I do respond to all the comments and I will try to help you get unstuck. Or if you just generally have questions about full nodes, feel free to leave those down there as well. Like the video if you learned something and subscribe for more tech money and success videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.